Hey everybody, Mike here, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna jump into what Metasploit is, how it works at a high level, and as always, we're going to get into actually learning about it and seeing it in action. So let's get right to it. Before we get into this lesson, I need you to do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button if this is the kind of content you really like. The most important thing to me is that you guys find value out of it. But how can you find value out of something if you don't know when new videos come out, right? So what I need you to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell. That way you'll get notifications when I put out videos like this. And hey, we can learn together. All right, so let's start off talking about what Metasploit is. Maybe you've heard about it, maybe you've read something about it, but you don't really know what it is. In a nutshell, it is a penetration testing framework, which is designed to have a series of different types of modules in it. And those modules do all kinds of different things. So for example, we might have a module, which is a port scanner. We might have another module, which allows us to listen for incoming connections. We might have an exploit module, which is what we're gonna see here in a minute that will allow us to take advantage of a vulnerability in a service or a piece of software on another system, thus allowing us access to that system. So there's all these different types of modules, and once you load up the framework, you can use all of these different modules. Now, don't worry, we will be diving specifically into the modules, how to load them, how to get new ones, how to search them, and all of that in the next video. In this video, we're focusing exclusively on what is Metasploit, and at a high level, I will demonstrate an exploit module for you in a minute. All right, before we get into that though, I wanna talk about the cost. So Metasploit is free. It comes loaded in Kali Linux or Parrot Linux, all of these different security distributions. Most of them will have Metasploit. The free version is CLI only, and you can do pretty much everything you'd ever wanna do in it. There is a paid version, which is called Metasploit Pro, which gives you some advanced automation capabilities, gives you some advanced reporting, and does give you a graphical user interface or a GUI. So you have that as an option if it's something you find valuable, if you're doing pen testing professionally, perhaps. But you definitely don't need the paid version for what we're doing. All right, so that said, I want to jump into the lab for the remainder of this video. We're going to fire up Metasploit. We're going to go ahead and scan an actual target in my lab. And we're going to see what happens, see if we can use Metasploit to help us out. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are on my Kali Linux instance. This is just a virtual machine in my environment. I'm running VMware Fusion. You can use VirtualBox or VMware Player or ESXi, whatever you have, you can use that to load this VM. Now, in my case, I also have another VM, which is running Metasploitable Linux too. It's just a form of Linux that has a ton of intentionally vulnerable software packages on it designed for learning Metasploit essentially. All right, so let's go ahead and scan our target. We're gonna do my kind of standard scan. I'm gonna do an nmap-v, we'll do dash uh, sv. So sv will tell us the version of the software running on the system. And in fact, let's do it without that first, just as a quick learning experience. So I'll do dash n that just disables DNS resolution and we'll specify the IP address of our target. There we go, so let's run that scan. Now that happened really fast, and I wanna show you why we want that SV. So if we scroll up a little here, look at this. We have SSH, Telnet, SMTP, uh, we have HTTP, we have a web server, but we don't know what kind of web server, we don't know what FTP service or SSH service, we don't know any of the versions. And these are very important when you're learning how to pen test, because if you don't know the version, you can't see if it's vulnerable to any known exploits. So what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rerun this scan. Let me just fix our window here. All right, I broke my LED. Back to the video, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and run this scan again. I'm gonna up arrow. Now we're gonna do the SV. I was mostly doing that on purpose as a way to help you guys learn some of the Nmap commands too. So now if I run SV, that's service version, if I run that, it's gonna take a little bit longer. We can see it, it sees all of those open ports, but now it says scanning 23 services. So this will take a minute. Once this comes back, what we're really looking for is to identify the types of software running, right? So we can see here as I burn just enough time for this scan to finish, we go up here, we see all of these versions listed here now. Now this is interesting. This is what we want because now we can go on Google or exploit DB 
and we can search for, you know, uh, Apache HTTP D 2.2.8. And we can see if that's a vulnerable version, if there's any known exploits out there, that sort of thing. Um, in our case though, let's see, I know, let's just start at the top. Let's just make this easy. So we'll start with right here, port 21. We see VS FTPD 2.3.4 is on this system. Now I'm going to copy that. And just because this is a Metasploit video, let's, let's open Metasploit. Let's see what we can do there. So to open Metasploit, to launch it, you're going to start at the CLI and type in MSF console, all one word, and hit enter. This is going to start loading the framework. Remember we talked about it's based on modules. So it's going to load the framework from which we can then search to see if we have a known module for that version of that FTP software. All right, so we see Metasploit loaded here. Now look at this, see how it says 2,296 exploits? Those are exploit modules. We see 1,201 auxiliary. Those are auxiliary modules. We have 409 post, those are post modules, uh, and so on, right? So these are all essentially types of modules within Metasploit. And it's worth mentioning that you can update this database. You can also download additional ones. You could even write your own and submit it. So there's, you're not just stuck with what's here. I just wanna make that very clear. But in our case, let's go ahead. So now that the, the framework is open, let's go ahead and search for that version of software. So to search all of our modules, We'll just do search within Metasploit and we'll go ahead and paste. Oops, let me go back. I think it was VS FTBD. Let's see what version that was. That was 2.3.4. Okay, so we'll do 2.3.4. All right, so we did a search for that. And what that came back with was modules that are currently loaded in Metasploit. Not all modules in the world for Metasploit, just that we have loaded currently. That's an important key. And we see here, uh, we have first the number of the exploit or the module, I should say. And then we have a path here, which tells you a little bit about the type of exploit it is or the type of module, I should say. We can see this says exploit on both of these. So these are both exploit modules. If it said auxiliary, those would be auxiliary modules. And like I said, we'll talk about the difference between the two in our next video. So let's continue down this path. All right, so we have here we want to use this one right here. It looks like there's a module that seems to match the version here. And let's go ahead and start with the first one. Sometimes it's worth mentioning you do have to try multiple modules. In our case, though, we're going to use this one. So the quick way to do it is we're going to type use. Then we're going to type the number next to that module. This is zero. So we'll say use zero. Now from here, we type options. We hit enter. And if we scroll up, we see we have a couple of options. Pretty basic. Uh, the most importantly here is we have our hosts. This is a common option among all of the modules. This is basically the target or the remote host. So in our case, we need to set that and we know we need to set it because it says required yes. So to do that, all we have to do is type set our host and then we put the IP address of our target, which is 192.168.0.66, all right. And we can also, if we wanna see all of those options again, we can type options again, and we can go up here. The default port for this exploit is 21. So if you're running this service on a non-standard port, we might wanna update from here, 21 to something else. In our case, that looks good though. So all we need to do, let's go ahead, we can type either run or we can type exploit. Either one will do the same thing. So I'll just type run and hit enter. All right, so we see that it, it says exploit completed, but no session created. Let's go ahead and let's run this again. So this is kind of interesting, and this is actually a good lesson about Metasploit. Look at this. Now it says found shell. So it's going to load up a shell here shortly, at least let's see if we have one. So it, see, it says command shell session one opened, and it says from our IP address to the target IP address on port 62,000. Now, look at this. If I type in um, PWD, a Linux command to see my present working directory, we see it says slash. That's kind of interesting. That's that's weird, right? Because if you look at this, you might quickly think that my, my session just froze. Metasploit is not working. But watch this. If I type, uh, who am I? Okay, I'm root. Let me remind you guys, if we scroll way up here, 
before Metasploit, look at this. My username is actually Mike. So now my username is suddenly root. And if I do hostname, we see the hostname is Metasploitable. So now I want to be clear, this is very basic access, right? We haven't actually uh, upgraded our shell to something usable. Like, you know, if I exit out of here, right? Let's abort this. So if I exit out of Metasploitable, right, the nice thing here is I can do ls, up arrow, and I get previous commands. Well, you don't get that in that default shell that we saw here. So there are ways around that, but that's out of the scope of this video. The point is we essentially just hacked into this Metasploitable VM really easily with Metasploit. Now, I'm not saying Metasploit is the tool for every pen testing engagement or anything like that. It's simply just another tool in your toolbox that you can use sometimes when it makes sense. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Until next time, stay nerdy.